Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, four nerds by nerds hanging out with Nathan Nerdark. Nerdark is Ted. From Hitai to Kai, empowering your monk. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. So we're back with another uh, recovery dice, healing dice, basically using your hit die in order to power some of your features uh, instead of using them for healing. So now we're on to the monk. We've done, you know, all the other classes previously uh, in the player's handbook. Now we're going monk and forward. So the the just like the fighter, the monk has three archetypes. And, you know, we want to give everyone at least two options. So we figured we'd come up with a list for, you know, four different options, one for each and uh, one for just the base class. That, so, that works. So what's, what's the monk, you know? So the monk at his core is a martial artist, right? So a lot of their abilities evolve around that. So we have three different archetypes. We have the way of the open hand, the way of the shadow, and the way of the four elements. Each one of them use, uses Kai power, and they use it in a different way. So your open hand is the one that really decides to focus more on improving their martial arts abilities and, and being you know, more of the hand-to-hand -hand combatant than the other two. Yeah, this, this, this is your kung fu theater guy uh, from Saturday mornings for, or Saturday afternoons for you guys that remember that. Uh, and then you know, the way of the shadow is straight up, that is pretty much your ninja. Yeah, and you know that that's going to focus very heavily on the the shadows, you know, being being in darkness, and and really getting to that core of you know you can't see me. Yeah, yeah, stealth, deception, subterfuge, those are the weapons of the ninja. Well, the way of the four elements is more of the monk with the elemental powers through their focus and martial skill, and also their you know um, kind of like they they go beyond those like to a supernatural. Sp like spellcaster level of power I mean, this, as a monk. this is really, you know, Avatar and the Last Airbender. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll simplify <laughs> this for you, Nate. It's, I was just trying to not say Avatar. <laughs> Waterbenders, Firebenders, Earthbenders, and Airbenders in, in a nutshell. Yeah, they use their monk uh, Kai points to fuel actual spells in some cases or special abilities like flaming ropes and right. water so, lashes. And things. So working our way back through open hand, you know, so we decided when we're coming up with this one, when you spend this resource, you should be better at fighting, you know, fighting unarmed and doing your, doing your monk stuff, your kung fu. Whoa. So, uh, you know, if they're going to do that, then since they get a, a flurry of blows where they can, you know, knock people down or push people back, you know, what if, what if they had an ability that essentially gave their opponents disadvantage? Yeah, so you you have three abilities, right? You have the one that it's not going to apply to this, and that is, bang! I hit you with one of my bone with one of my flurry of blows, and you just get no reactions. All right, so it's not going to help you there. But the other one is make a strength strength saving throw, or I'm going to knock you back 15 feet. Giving them disadvantage there might be really nice, especially if you're on a wall or there's a pit or something like that. Or maybe you just want to limit their movement and you want to knock them down. Well, if they fail a dexterity saving throw, you have the ability to knock them prone. Disadvantage on that, super helpful for the monk. Especially if you do that one first because then you get advantage because they're already on the ground. That is true. So there's definitely some reasons why you would want to do that. All right, so, way, uh, so what, what would we call that one? I think we're going to call it that focus strike. So way, way of the Shadow is, is the one that you know really gets the ability to teleport from shadow to shadow, but if you're standing in the middle of, you know, sunny, sunny field and there's a tree over there that it's got some shadow and you really want to get behind it, really can't if there's no shadow. Yeah, they get some other abilities too that are basically more along the lines of, you know, stealth and subterfuge and they can use their Kai points for spells. But this time I think we're going to, we're going to definitely focus on that aspect of them being able to move through shadows and disappear from one place and reappear another. That's very ninja-esque, I think. And when you watch the, the ninja movies, you know, all over the place, they're always throwing down the smoke bombs. It's like smoke appears, the next thing you know, they're, they're gone. The Ninja Turtles do it, the foot soldiers use it. Lots of other, you know, thing, things a, out there. It's a standard trope. Yes. So why can't we give the Way of the Shadow a smoke bomb? So essentially, you know, they use this resource. However many times they can use it, they have it, they boom, they teleport, and then, and then they have to reappear somewhere else. So it's going to be limited, but it'll be useful. And it's, it seems thematic and sticks with, you know, 
the ninja theme. It's going to remove a limitation, and in order to do so, they're expending a resource. And with the uh, the Way of the Four Elements monk, they're all about uh, using their, their Kai points to fuel spells and fuel special abilities that are going to give them access to manipulating the elements. And some of those um, require saving throws. So I was thinking we could bump their ability to have that power of that element. Well, many and, of them require saving throws. Uh, some of them are just straight up spells like uh, Thunder Wave, Fireball, and Fireball, and Cone of Cold. But other ones are like more like spell like abilities that were designed just for for the way of the the four elements. And they're like you know basically you reach out with a tendril of fire or air, you know, or there's like one called Water Whip. And all of them have like you know the, these add on things that you can kind of do that usually require saving throws. So along with the spells and this, I feel like there's going to be a lot of useful uh, versatility if we give them ability that increases the difficulty of those saving throws. So what if as part of the, you know, casting the spell, you can expend your expend this resource and infuse your spells for the next minute and have, uh, you know, plus, plus two to your DC? I think that would work out great. And uh, we're going to call this one Elemental Infusion. So, you know, your, your, your spells are going to be a little Kai-powered. Or it could be Kai-infused Kai uh, spells. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Well, you know, what is in a name? But uh, <laughs> this is going to give you more versatility and allow the el- way of the Elements Monk to hit a little bit harder. All right, so then, you know, so we have to go back to the base class so that everybody has two options. So what do, what do we feel is the most uh, needed for our standard everyday Monk? Well, One of the abilities I like the most of the monk in general is its ability to deflect or catch uh, missile weapons and throw them back. So if there's something we can do with that, make that a little cooler, I'd like that. Well, I'm 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 a big fan of deflect arrows, and you know it was it was awesome the first time I actually got to use it. I caught the hand axe and I threw it back. It was great. So what if what if instead of you know just taking in you know a, a standard ranged attack, what if we got allotted for a ranged spell. So in, instead of deflect missile, it deflects spell. It works the exact same well way. You need a D10, you add your ability modifier, you add your monk level, and basically one attack at you, you can either deflect it or maybe uh, reflect it back at them. You know, you maybe even using the same, the same mechanics that were used against you. If it's a magic missile, they automatically get hit by one missile. I mean, you're going to get hit by the other ones anyway. If it's a, you know, if it's a ray of searing light, you know, you have to make the attack roll. Yeah, you know, things like that. It, I think it'd be thematic. I think it's fun. You're using a resource. And, you know, I think I've seen it in tropes before, so why not? So, you know, it's it's still going to allow you to mitigate what what's there. And, hey, you know, if you're shaving off some of the damage that you were taking, whether it's a arrow or whether it's a, you know, flaming sphere or what have you, why not? So what do you guys think? Would you introduce this into your game? Would you allow your monks to get crazy with deflecting spells or empowering their spells or focus strike? We got a place for that. It's called the comments. Let us know. And while you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. You can check out the articles over at nerdarchy.com. Or you can follow us on Instagram. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.